Hey, my name is Ben, and I take care of some of the marketing and social media here at MeasureQuick. Been with the company for about a year and a half now, and we just introduced some of the biggest interface updates that I've seen since I started here. They're so significant that I thought it'd be a great idea to have a conversation with Jim about the different features that are coming out. So Jim, I have a couple of questions for you, and I'd love to learn a bit more about the reasoning behind you made some of these updates. So sure. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's start with, uh, you know, when somebody first downloads the app, opens the app up after this update, what are they going to see that's different than it was before? Yeah, it really goes back to our roots where I believe you're going to land on the gauge page as our default page on here. Um, just like this. But it's about, yeah, just like this. It's about time to value, right? It's, we had a lot of technicians that use measure quick. They're, they're usually something's wrong then they want to get to the gauge screen or to the diagnostics right away. So we set up measure quick down at the bottom here. It's got this, like this whole tab view and basically you can be on your home screen. They'll take you back to your home screen, your grid view. I'll show you in just a minute, your gauges, your toolbox, whatever you close on is what you're going to open on. So if you use the gauges all the time, then every time you open up measure quick, once it's configured, it's going to auto connect all your tools and immediately start spitting out data and connect to the gauges. So it's very tech centric. It's, it's, it ties back to like a set of roots of what measure quick originally was. Yeah, that sounds super convenient too for somebody who's so busy going from job to job. So that sounds great. And you mentioned grid view. I see that down at the bottom now. So that's new. And what does that yeah, look like? Yeah, so we, we had a, a lot of text, like this is like our, our target zones, right? And a lot of people were like, oh, can we get all this stuff on a single screen? And so grid view, when you tap on the grid view, it does a couple of things. It pulls up MQ Assist and Measure Quick Assist is at the top there is just to help bring some of the hidden parts of Measure Quick forward. We had a, we have a lot of people that we have a diagnostics button, but people don't really realize it's our diagnostics. So it was about making it so that you knew right away that this is a button, this is something you could tap and it's going to provide you a value. And then this screen, this grid view is all about putting all the data on one screen. Down this side, you have your, your refrigerant side over here. We have our air side measurements. All these are buttons. If you tap on one of them, in this case here, you can see the suction line temperature is high. There's a little up arrow next to it. If I tap on that suction line, it'll tell me what the current value is, what the calculated target is, the range that Measure Quick is expecting. But then it'll also tell you what it means when your suction line temperature is too high and what to look for, right? In this case here, we just have a really high load and the flag would clear when the load gets under control. But it makes it very easy to see at a glance what things are in range and what things are out of range on a full screen as well as to do things like set up your profile. So again, all these are buttons. So if you tap on this TXV, I can change it to a piston metering device or a fixed. In the case of airflow, it allows me, in, it, right now we have our auto airflow selection, so it's telling me we're optimized for, a, for a, a warm, humid climate. We can also do things like turn on advanced targets and we can set that target manually, right? It really brings a lot of these things forward. Obviously, we can go to the full profile too, and do things like I'll put in the tonnage here and maybe the year installed was 2020 on this unit and then hit continue. So it, it allows you to, like I said, do a quick assessment of everything and then have all this data. And what's really slick with this is now in one type of a button, you can capture all that data mm. in a screenshot. Screenshots are back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you notice down at the bottom, there is this little uh, patent pending feature down here. That is a uh, geolocation, right? And so part of the the big deal with Measure Quick, part of the reason screenshots were shut down at one point is because we needed a method to keep the data integrity high. In other words, we need to know where these screenshots were taken. Because if you take a screenshot of a screenshot, it just changes the metadata and, and it could be used over and over again. And we're seeing some cases that they were used over again, right? Falsification. And so, a falsification, yeah. And it was in... in, in when you when we work with like Department of Energy was one of our clients we're trying to work with, or we work with utility clients, or we're trying to do programs around the country, and so the data integrity for Measure Quick is is a really big deal. And so this feature allows us to put a geolocation on the screenshot, and then additionally that QR code if you scan it will go to that, so it makes it a little bit harder to game, and it allows us to bring that screenshot feature back, which is something that a lot of technicians wanted. And what's slick with this too is 
If you're in a project, it'll update that geolocation to a fixed address. That's super cool. And related to data integrity, if you're a service manager and owner, then the ideal way to do it is to have an integration with your CRM, house called Pro or Service Titan, to be able to make sure that data is syncing across from MeasureQuick to your field service management software. But in the event that you don't have that or you want to store those screenshots, you should be demanding that every new Measure Quick screenshot has that bar at the bottom because that allows you to make sure that when a tech does that upload, that the data does reflect the reality of the job that they were just on. Yeah, and that's really important for things like combustion analysis. We want to make sure that we're getting data back because it's important not only from a performance standpoint, but also for safety, right? So these are all things that just make the integrity of the data higher. You get a couple of bad players and, uh, and it changes everything for everybody. And so we are really glad we could figure out a way to actually uh, give those screenshots back. And Jim, you jumped around on this showing off a lot of amazing features, but I wanted to point out that in this grid view, as you mentioned, it brings you back to these screens, to these sections of the app that a lot of people maybe don't know about, that they don't go into often, but they were always there. Right. And so this is just a new gateway to getting to all of those measure quick features that were always beneath the surface. So like clicking on, let's say, any of those buttons in this grid, any of those measurements. Oh, like, like here, here's one, like this view diagnostics button, right? This triangle, a lot of people see this up in a corner. I don't know how many times I've been on like Facebook or something and seen somebody asking questions about measure quick or about a diagnostic. And I'm like, would you just tap the triangle or tap the flag in the corner? So when you tap on this diagnostic button, it obviously pulls up the, the fault. Then if we tap on that fault again, it again explains what low sensible capacity is, what things to look for, what could cause it. In this case, we have, in fact, if you were to read through this, it'll tell you a uh, low airflow block filter. And that's exactly what we have out there. We have a system that's got a dirty filter. You go down a little bit, you can see our airflow is 290 STFM. We'll just edit our profile here. I'll put the, take this up to a ton here, just so it makes sense for everybody. Change our metering device to a piston. And when you continue here, you can see we're at 525 CFM, 550 ish. So it's again on the lower side of the airflow on there. And that's why we're having that most sensible capacity. Yeah. And I've heard it argued from time to time that measure quick uh, might make technicians dumber, but I think a lot of those people don't ever dive through those buttons to get to understanding the diagnostics and reading about all of those important facts and just-in-time learning recommendations that really, I think, accelerates technicians in the field from knowing things that maybe they forgot at some point or never learned in the first place. The whole idea behind this is to really aid technicians in getting the job done faster, right? It's never come down to, oh, you can't figure it out. It's a fact. The fact is you can't figure it out faster than Measure Quick figures it out because as soon as the system is stable, the software has a really good idea what's wrong, if not definitively what's wrong in the system. People are like, oh, you need to give them, a, you need to teach them to fish before you give them a fish. Systems are so complex today. When you look at this grid, right, and it's what, four by five, there's 20 different readings on that grid. And uh, how many combinations is that, right, of, of readings that you could have? There's nobody in the world that could take all those possible combinations and look at those and look at those numbers and determine if the system is what's wrong with the system faster than software can. It's just not possible. That'd be a com competition I'd pay to see. <laughs> oh, I can't even do it. I designed the software and I, I, a lot of times I'll be looking at something and I'll question it myself and I'll go, what could be wrong with this thing? And I'll go in and, and look at the diagnostics and either confirm what I thought I saw or I'll go, oh yeah, that makes sense. And uh, go back to it. But each one of these things is something, it's a, real physical problem we put into real equipment, right? We're running on real equipment right now. So it's just, it's a pretty interesting, pretty interesting view. And I think a view, a lot of people will, especially people that want all the readings mm -hmm. at their fingertips. You notice too, there's check marks next to a bunch of those and you'll see it, an upper arrow on the return air wet bulb and a down arrow on the liquid line temperature. And those are telling you if you were to go to the gauges, right? So let's go to that uh, liquid line temperature. So you can see that liquid line temperature is right on the threshold of being a, a little bit, software is calculating as being a little bit low of a temperature, right? So those up and down arrows correspond. If it's green, it's a green check mark. If it's red, it's high. If it's blue, it's low. 
with the gauge arrows. If you're looking at the return or wet ball was high, it's the same exact data. Yeah, it's just presented in a different way. So it makes it easy to understand and and easy to use. And scroll up a bit. I want to chat about this MQ Assist. What? So that is a, that is an AI or that's just a, what is that's going on there? So technically, yes, it is. It is an AI. Measure Quick is has been AI for a, a long time. It's just not a large language model AI. So it's not something we talk to. It's a tool that is basically taking a look at all the readings that come into it and spitting out a diagnostic. That's exactly what, what AI is. But we looked at a, a lot of, a lot of, like if you look at AI right now, it's really overhyped. It's delusional. And that's what MeasureQuick is not. MeasureQuick's not delusional because we actually programmed. It's not a, it's not a learning model. It's actually a programmed model, right? It's a little bit, a little bit different. But at the, at what it's trying to do here is bring, and we're going in and out of stability here for just a second here. We'll let that uh, click on the view diagnostics here. What it's doing is it's pulling that data up to the front to where we can actually see what's going on here. We want to see if our sensible capacity is low, what caused that, or refrigerant charge could be overcharged with refrigerant, what causes that. We can tap on again, tap on that and see what's going on with that specific fault. So it allows us to just bring some things forward. In this case, if you look at on the gauge UI, that same information's here, but it may not be apparent that's actually a button until you tap it. So that grid view in that measure quick assist is just designed to, to be a little bit more of a tool that's going to make sure you get in the right sections of the app. Yeah, it seems like a debug log, like in the world of computers, you have a, as you're doing something inside of a program, then there is a terminal that's spitting out the context of being like the program just did this. And so now you've provided that to the user is before yep. you'd be doing that all in the background all the time, making all those calculations. But now it's okay, here's a context change. Here's a change. Here's a change. Make sure okay. that you know that this is happening. And there's things too, like you can see your return air statics uh, a little high on there, right? So there's also more options. If you want to go in, you want to do a quick test. There's some things you can do. And you yeah. want to go into one of the NCI you know, static pressure screenings. You can jump right into that static pressure screening and go through that process Beauty. and set up your budget and do those things. So it it's about quickly navigating the app and going where you want to go without having to um, without having to tap a lot of buttons to get there. So if we want to start a project or we just want to start testing, it allows us to to get there quickly. And then as things update in the background, it changes the context. So right now it's waiting for stability again. And as soon as it's stable, it'll provide us with a diagnostic. Hey, right, Jim, give me another screenshot. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's awesome. Go. This is something that I know a lot of people, they love that feature. And I'm yeah, and glad it, that it's it works from all views too. So it's not just from the grid. If you're in the, any view you want to be in, it'll do that, even including things like trending. So anywhere you want to take a screenshot in the application, you can do that. And now that we have geolocation on there, it just, again, it, it, we know the, the context that those came from. And so what's cool too, is you can search for these in your camera rolls. Again, if you're in a project that's going to pull in the address, you can literally search by one, two, three main street. And if you're in an iPhone, if it'll see that text in that photo and allow you to pull up that address directly, or you can do geolocation, either one, but it's just slick because it makes it really easy for a technician to, uh, to find those in the camera roll later on. That's awesome. Now, Classic reports, because that's one other thing. It's not so obvious that that is included in this update, but what yep. are classic reports and what do they mean to technicians? So again, we're not in a project right now, so you can just see where we're at. So I'm going to go hit report here and then I'll generate the measure quick classic report. And the measure quick pl- classic report is just all the readings uh, off the system. In this case here, we're getting our low pressure, high pressure readings, suction line temp. These are all coming off JB probes. What's calculated, what's measured, but it, it's all the readings. Uh, the basic reporting allows you to, again, you, you get that, you can email it, you can store it, whatever you want to do with that, but it pulls in all the measurements from the project you're in. Awesome. And then that is just another version of keeping that to long term record. And the reporting is one of the coolest features about Measure Quick. And just there's not enough people that use them at all. So hopefully, people as you explore these classic report features, then that might get you curious about what's going on with the Premier uh, Services reports because those are what get you the vital score, which is absolutely fantastic for communicating value to homeowners. And yeah, th- things too, if you hit the hotkey down here at the bottom, that brings up 
the shortcuts, but it also brings up the uh, measure quick assist. Oh, cool. Yeah, any anytime you're in here, you can tap on that key. Now, let's, let me show you, because this is interesting, because right now you can see we have start a project down here at the bottom. We'll just start a project here, and I'll do an air, air conditioning, and I'll just select our piece of equipment from the shop here. But once you're in a project, that hotkey, again, it's dynamic. So if I go back to those gauges and tap here, now you can see I, I have shortcuts to my notes, my corrective actions, my electrical data streaming, my profile, add photos. So if I want to add photos, anytime, if I want to take a picture of my thermostat, I just click on the photo and take the photo. If I want to go in and do anything with my corrective actions, I can click on that and tap off of my corrective actions. Anywhere I'm in the application, this hotkey links you to shortcuts. So you can actually do things as well as bringing up the MQ Assist. Again, it brings some things forward that were hidden in the background. So it's super friendly for a, a smartphone, right? And that's why I opted to, to demo it in this case. And Jim, my last question for you, how much does this cost? Yeah, it's the uh, same price it's always been. It's free. And the screenshotting, the uh, the, the, the general report, the measure quick report, the classic report, diagnostics, the uh, MQ assist, the grid view, all this is part of the free version of measure quick. Again, we, we want to get back to our roots and be able to really service the technician, right? The technician has long been our gateway to the employer and Ultimately, the more people, the more techs we have using MeasureQuick, the happier the techs are, the higher our chances are of getting them to take this back to their owners and their bosses and getting this implemented as a company tool using some of the paid features of MeasureQuick that really um, allow, allow everybody to go to that next level, right? And that's where it's really the biggest opportunities are at is benchmarking, storing the data in the cloud, data streaming, the pro reports, things like that actually had a lot of revenue per ticket, but we also wanted to be able to service the technician and this it update all starts really, with the tech. Yeah. Yeah. This update really does that. Awesome, Jim. Thanks so much for the tutorial and really looking forward to getting some feedback about how people like this. No, great. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Ben.